The first thing you need to know about George Orwell's 1984 is that almost certainly the, the preface you will find in the first pages of your edition of the book will be a, a complete fraud. The preface uh, written by whatever expert the publisher decided to employ um, will very likely be filled with a large amount of fake flattery to the author, to his style, uh, life and career. But in the middle of it, you will, you are bound to find a lot of mi uh, disinformation and misdirections. The expert will, will tell you the novel is a satire or a critique of Stalinism or of Nazism or even worse, a, a critique of uh, modern capitalism. And these are things uh, 1984 is certainly not about. The book was written li like Winston's diary to the men of the, the future. Um, it was written to the men of the future because Orwell could see as early as the mid 40s, the kind of society England and the West were heading towards. 1984 did not sell by the tens of million and it wasn't translated into most uh, world languages, um, I hope, thanks to the experts' recommendations. But despite of those, 1984 is an absolutely great work and in many ways, um, and it stands alone in, uh, amongst futurology novels, if not by anything else, by the sheer number of correct predictions contained in it. As far as I know, no other work of fiction can claim to have even a similar amount of correct predictions in such diverse fields as politics, technology, and even uh, music and, and the arts. But I wonder, are most readers of the book understanding what is really important about it? What really uh, is the, the message uh, of our world to us, the men and women of, of the future? Our most readers understanding who Orwell was warning us against or have several generations of prefaces and study guides and experts uh, completely led the, the readers in, in the wrong direction. In a letter to a friend in 1949, Orwell wrote, and I paraphrase, um, that totalitarian ideas were taking root in the minds of intellectuals. And he was writing a book to describe what the future could look like if these people were to be allowed to continue infiltrating uh, British society and increasing their grip on the power structures. He saw this uh, totalitarian ideas developing not in the minds of um, uh, conservatives and traditionalists, but amongst uh, the left-wingers of his day, professors, journalists and intellectuals. Uh, read his excellent essay, uh, Politics and the English Language, which he wrote in 1946, and you'll have a good idea of whom he was talking about in, in, the, in the letter and who were the main subjects of 1984, the novel. In, a, in the same essay, uh, there are also references to the, to the beginning of um, the usage of politically correct language by the left. Uh, that manipulation of language uh, terrified George Orwell, even then, in, in the 40s. Uh, and in the novel, he, he calls it Newspeak, and he speculated at length there about the dangers of uh, this shift uh, in use of language. These um, left-wingers, wh whom he satirizes in the book, as well in, in other essays, essays and letters, were not... Um, uh, socialists uh, like himself was who adopted um, a socialist progressive worldview in response to the to the absurd social inequalities that he observed in England since um, since his school days. Uh, these left wingers he talks about were the power mad um, dogs, Inksark in the book, uh, the left wingers that simply hated European civilization and wished to see it uh, completely destroyed and, and wished to see its traditional society replaced with something completely alien. 
that is a very important distinction that many people, mainly right wingers and conservatives in the US, do not always understand. Or Orwell lived and, and died a working class rights advocate and, and a socialist. Um, and at the same time, there's no paradox in this. He, he hated the elitist left, which he did not understand, sorry, which did not understand the working classes or couldn't, call, couldn't care less um, about the working men. The, these are the people who moved around in university circles and would not dream of living uh, in squalor with the poor and with the workers as Orwell uh, did himself so, so often in his life. Uh, these were people like the Fabians, like George Bernard Shaw, uh, H. G. Wells, and, and and like the cultural Marxists uh, of today, really, uh, like Christopher Hitchens, Stephen Fry, and anyone at the BBC. Resentful, hateful, atheistic, uh, fanatical, and utterly and totally dishonest. Orwell did not stand how these people were deceiving the working classes with their promises of uh, social change. Um, and justice, and at the same time, either praising Stalin uh, for his good work, or consorting with the with the super rich and advising them on how to better control the masses uh, through fake uh, socialism and Fabianism. This Fabian society crowd also um, almost certainly uh, the inspiration for the title of the book itself, not the year of the book was written like the experts are likely to tell you. The Fabian Society was formed in the year 1884. Um, they promote the, the, and promote a strategy of gradualist infiltration and subversion of society as opposed to armed revolution like the, um, the Leninists and the Bolsheviks did. And it is very likely that the name Orwell shows for, for the book is an, an allusion to that, um, how English society would look like after a long 100 year period of infiltration by the Fabians starting in 1884 um, until their power was to be absolute. On a similar note, the choice of uh, Ink Sox, Arch Villain, Goldstein is also a very likely um, to be modeled on the bloodthirsty revolutionary Leon Trotsky, who hated the Fabians precisely because they opted against, uh, his, against his wishes for a long, slow, but obviously successful strategy of infiltration and subversion from within the establishment. Leon Trotsky um, was a Bolshevik and he, um, he simply advocated that um, the establishment should be overthrown by violence and not by uh, gradualism of or subversion from within. And today in Britain and throughout Europe and, and the US, we see the, the almost absolute victory of Ink Sox policies and techniques from the, the absolute rule of political correct speech to the surveillance of citizens, the decay in, in art and music and the dumping, dumping down of um, society through education and language in general. All aspects that the expert critics that write about uh, 1984 uh, completely ignore. I would suggest, if I may, that if you if you're reading the book for the first time, you do so without relying on any study guides or whatsoever, and, or even without reading the preface uh, in the edition of your book. And if you have read it, I urge you to reread it, um, trying this time to ignore, if possible, what the experts of this uh, fantastic uh, book told you, wh what the ideas are about. Thanks for listening.